I think that's the trouble with a lot of people today, you know. They've got no backbone. They tend to sort of crumple at the slightest little thing, you know. Not me. No. If you ever meet any of these um, waterways people, they'll tell you, oh, be careful of her, you know. Oh, <laughs> she likes it, she likes it. If she doesn't, you add it. <laughs> oh, dear. I suppose I'm just a bit strong-willed and gobby. Can't help it. <laughs> this is a uh, Hartford Union arm. I know it's nowhere near Hartford, but it's called that. <clears throat> but it's between the Regent's Canal up top and the River Lee down here. And um, over there, there was a wood yard, which right the way up from where we are here, right the way to the bridge, Gunmaker's Bridge, the next bridge up. And they used to import timber, all sorts of exotic types. And there was kilns where it was all dried and what's the name. It was a busy place. There was 15 men on this section, 15, all, and all sort of their depot was at Old Ford, you know, uh, on the regions just up top there. And they all had to be in sharp, and if you came in late, you're five, ten minutes late, you can go home. We'll let you work, all for seven pound a week. Well, they were quite, um, quite strict. My hubby got the uh, foreman's job, you know. Good man, good man. And, um, oh, there was all sorts going on. Then they had stop what they call stoppages on the canal, which was to repair the gates and they had to drain the canal, the lock, get the water out so they get in and clean it and you know, do things, you'd be surprised. They did sort of maintenance as well as the moving barges and things. They, they had their own chippies, carpenters, uh, their own plumbers, uh, their own brickies, their own electricians. They had the workforce of their own, you know. Good, it was a good, I think it was a good concern, you know. And it could have made money if they'd had the right people to manage it. There was a lock keeper at every lock and it was their job to see everything went smoothly through as regards traffic, commercial or otherwise, you know. And they would see that the gates were set properly or everything was in order. If they lost, lost a, a lock of water or, the, you know, through a, a leak, they'd have to fill the lock up and then perhaps they may have to, if that took a lot of water out of, say, that pond, call them ponds, pond up there, they'd have to phone up and say, would you please get somebody to run a drop of water? I'm so many inches short. My second husband knew to the inch how much everything held. Everything, lock and the ponds, everything. Even I picked it up and these last 10, he's been gone 10 years now, um, I sort of was sort of semi lock keeper, I suppose. I, a, a chap used to come in in the mornings, Colin is a nice chap. That's him up there. And he'd, um, I'd ring him and say, Colin, you want two foot? That middle pond is right down, you know. So he'd know before he came in. And uh, that's how it was. And they, they, they looked after the gates, they cleared the gates. If there was any rubbish, they had rakes and things to rake it. You'd be surprised what they used to have to do, you know, and give a hand when anybody came through. Yeah, but, and it was a lock keeper at every lock.